Laura King is Britain's largest importer of caviar. She's an expert at selling to the super rich. I guess if I sold baked beans, I'd have a different clientele, but the people that I deal with are the wealthiest in the world, generally. Over 25 years, Laura has supplied the world's most expensive food to classic establishments like Claridge's, Harrods, the Ritz, and even to the Queen. She's fantastic. But London is a city in transition. Old wealth is on the decline, and new money is pouring in. Over half of the capital's properties worth over £10 million are now owned by foreign money. Of course there's still old money, um, but more and more, I suppose, as that old money disappears, there's a lot of um, new money coming into London, and I think people want to spend it, and they want to spend it on the best things. You've got to try and keep ahead of the game. To entice this new breed of clientele to her business, Laura's hosting a caviar tasting at Russian-owned jewellery theatre. Specialising in luxury diamond couture, it's a magnet for new, young, foreign wealth. Matab Jamali is an Iranian fashion designer, now residing in London. The fact that there are a lot of billionaires or like a fine kind of living people living in, in London and in England, um, it's just normal in a way. And they aren't afraid to flaunt it. Money comes, money goes, you know. But if you are living in a way that makes you truly happy, then do whatever you would like to do. And when it comes to spending, they're in a league of their own. It's the perfect dummy. The 18 karat white gold. It's 8,500 pounds. One of our best sellers. It's not about the price you're spending on certain things. It's about how you feel with something. Everything in luxury is nice. I think the people who buy diamonds definitely are that same market that are probably going to be buying caviar. So we're tasting four caviars today. When we taste caviar, we always taste it on the back of our hand. Um, and we do that so nothing impairs the taste. You just get the taste of the caviar. You would not even use a gold spoon? If you use gold or silver, it would oxidise. I mean, I haven't got any solid gold um, Spoons, but I, 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 I we can make to it invest. For you. Yeah. <laughs> In Laura's world, when you want to win over new clients, diplomacy is everything, especially when presented with a dizzying mix of wealthy Iranians, Russians, and Lebanese. Beluga is the most expensive. Uh, historically, Iran was always the best. I grew up in parts of Russia. So I know about uh, beluga. I don't know much about the rest. And I remember it, it's been very soft. Sometimes people say to me, oh, we're doing a tasting. Can we have Russian farm caviar? And I won't buy it because the quality is just so poor. It's, it's awful. It used to be the leaders. It's a very small farm in Belgium that I work with. They produce the best the best caviar, really. Um, I think you'll be surprised in terms of how soft they all are. Take a spoon and then just dig in, dig into the middle and put it on the back of your hand. Please, please. Mm. Perfect. That's how it should be. That's how it should always should be. It's very good taste. Beautiful. What's not good about it? In top hotels, this 1.8 kilo tin of beluga can retail for £24,000. Caviar is rare, so even farmed, you've got to wait 12 years before the beluga will be ready to produce the eggs. It, it's the rarity, it's the time it takes you, and that's what denotes the cost. Next is the slightly cheaper Ozietra. Go for it, go for it. I like the texture of mm -hmm. this one more. Because it's firmer. And I usually like more expensive things, so... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are, everyone is going to be impressed by a caviar tasting because not everyone's done it. And it's unique, it's special, and of course it's incredibly expensive. And people like all that stuff. King's Fine Food Holly speaking, how can I help? Recently, certainly in the last year, people are buying more caviar and individuals are definitely buying more caviar. We're seeing people buying larger quantities of caviar. 
something's going on. It's a far cry from when Laura King started selling caviar 25 years ago. I didn't even like it. It took me 10 minutes to muster up the sort of strength to think I've got to eat this stuff. OK, Paul, I'll get you six jars, OK? Cheers, Paul. Thanks. Bye, bye. Now Laura has built King's into a family business. My sister, Sally, who joined the business. When did you join, Sally? Uh, July 2012. Yeah, it's another world, isn't it? Yeah. It's a sort of family business because obviously my husband packs caviar. I'm I'm the slave. I'm freezing even in the summer. But with London's modern elite creating a lucrative new market, Laura thinks the business needs a new plan of attack. What about have you got the balloon? So her latest recruit is her 21-year-old daughter Holly. Where would you get those from? They look really £2.50. Mm -hmm. H&M. What, recently? Yeah, like at the weekend. I thought they'd be nice for work. Nice. Bargain. I get it from 2 you. 50 But this is only Holly's second job after leaving school. Oh, OK, I am very sorry about that. And she's got much to learn from her mum about selling the world's most expensive food. Sometime this week or... I or probably right. first tried caviar about, maybe about two years ago. And she opened the tin and I was just like... I'm not going to lie, I felt a bit sick at first because it doesn't look that appealing. I honestly never thought that I'd go into caviar. So this afternoon, we're going to, um, we're going to do this thing with uh, this sort of high net worth Chinese chat. So I'll get you to spoon out the caviar on the back of the hand. So make sure you don't drop it or throw it. Or... I just remember last time when I was spooning it out on people's hands, I got confused with what was what. Holly went to give him the caviar and spilled it all down it. He didn't look very impressed, did he? China is now minting more billionaires every year than any other country. To attract this new wealth to Britain, the Home Office is fast-tracking more residency visas for Chinese millionaires than any other nationality. But I think the Chinese don't particularly know about caviar yet. So that's another challenge on the list. That's one Holly will be pursuing, I think. I am quite a slow learner, but I think I've picked it up quite quickly. But I think that has got a lot to do with the fact that I'm learning from the best, so that helps. Oh, sweet. <laughs> the old money is, is being replaced with new money. I think with new money, there's a lot more of it. Individual clients could spend £120,000 on caviar a lot of money. 33-year-old Jing Wei was educated at Cambridge and Harvard in computing and finance. He's a very 21st century entrepreneur. This is my daughter, Holly. Yeah, this is Jing. Hi, Hi, Jing. Holly. Nice oh, nice to meet you. Do you like caviar? Um, to be honest with you, I'm very new to this. Tell me, someone said to me that there is a Chinese proverb that if you eat fish roe, uh, fish eggs, you'll be bad at maths. Yes, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah. I, trust me, I know everything about China now. I've learned a lot about China. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, it's pretty new. Uh, it's in cryptocurrency. I'm not sure you've heard of that. Uh, it's Bitcoin. And is it successful? It is quite good. I mean, it took us a month from zero to 0 0.7, yeah, 0 0.7 million uh, US dollars. Wow. A beluga sturgeon in the wild could be more than a ton in weight, four metres long. So that's the size of a sort of mini. I mean, it's massive. <laughs> it's the most expensive food in the world. And it's what they call an acquired taste. That tastes very different from anything I've tried before. Mm. That, to a private individual, would be about £12,000. Well, impressive. One hotel in London sells it for £14,000 a kilo <laughs> that I supply. I see. So I'd it's better a lot, buy huh? from you directly. But... You're much better. <laughs> yeah, you get a much better deal. Yeah, yeah. Please have. I suppose caviar stands for wealth, it stands for luxury, it stands for the best. Uh, Maybe it makes some people feel important. It makes them feel that they've got 
a lot of status. Obviously it is luxury food, but I personally think in China, there are a lot of uh, young Chinese couples, they, they, they might have Western style weddings. So this might be a good fit. Have you got a wedding coming up? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign visitors now spend more than £21 billion each year. Good news if you run an exclusive Mayfair hotel, like Brown's. Well, our guests are looking for the ultimate in luxury experience. They like um, the best of everything, and I suppose that includes caviar. Lydia Forte is the daughter of Sir Rocco Forte and heiress to the multi-billion pound Forte Hotel Empire. She's responsible for food and beverages at Brown's and with new money in town, wants the finest caviar. To land um, a, a, a big client like Brown's or the, the Forte Group would be fantastic for Kings. But Laura thinks it's time for daughter Holly to step up and pitch for the business herself. So she's brought her to a caviar farm in France to learn more about her precious product. Are you going to hold it? No, I'm not. I've got my best coat on. No way. That's not no way, fair. I say. In 2006, it became illegal to catch wild sturgeon, and now all caviar is farmed. <laughs> <laughs> the fish are given an ultrasound to see if their eggs are ready to be harvested. If mature, the sturgeon are humanely killed and their eggs removed. It smells so fishy. Is there? They're like Play-Doh when you're a kid. It feels like that. We will, uh, we will taste it if you want to taste that. It's yeah. not a fishy, it's not fish taste, it's just nutty. It's quite... So it's, it's, just, it's just one taste, just nutty. That's the only way I can describe it. One fish can produce 2,000 pounds worth of caviar. I've got much more understanding as to why the product is so expensive. I, I've just, I think I've just, when I get home, just got to put it to the test, go out, do caviar tasting. In central London, Holly is on her way to her first solo pitch of King's Caviar to the multi-billion pound Forte Hotel Group. To get to supply a client like Lydia Forte, to be able to get into, you know, all of her hotels and restaurants would be absolutely phenomenal. It is quite intimidating, yeah. Ever since I was a little girl, I can pretty much remember loving caviar. My grandmother, and every year she used to do these amazing Christmas drinks. And one year, they found my cousin and I aged three and a half, sitting under a coffee table in the corner of a sitting room, having polished off half the plate of the caviar canopies. So, yeah, I think I've always liked it quite a lot. <laughs> It'll be brilliant, and great to do it to a woman who's sort of taking over the mantle of Forte's, and obviously, long term, that's what Holly's going to be doing with Kings. And, and similar sort of situation, really. I think the thing about Holly is she's far more coherent than I am, really, and So, yeah, beluga, yeah, yeah. Aussie extra. Yeah. Holly. Lydia. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Nice Want to take a seat? What we're going to do is we're going to start with the beluga, Great. which is this one here. Yeah. Um, and the beluga, it can weigh up to, in t to a ton in weight. She's spent eight months in the business and now is the time where she's going to start to go out and to visit customers. It should taste quite creamy, walnutty, very subtle. 
there is a new generation of, of wealth coming up. So for Holly and for the business to get into that is just fantastic. This is Ozietra, mm -hmm. um, yeah. the way it looks. Thanks. I've definitely got, got some big shoes to fill, but hopefully I'm getting there slowly. Delicious. I mean, would you consider doing sort of like a co-branded sort of Rocco Forte own label 10 gram caviar? Or yeah, would that be we could definitely talk about it. I think that would be really interesting for yeah. the group as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for the tasting. Um, it's delicious. My mum, she always says to me in about five years, I'm going to be on a beach in Barbados with my sunglasses on. I'm going to throw my phone in the sea and I'm not going to come back. But I can't see her retiring anytime soon. Have it go. I think it went really badly. Yes. She said you were really good. I said about those two, I said they're both Barry. Oh, did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's gold starting. Yeah, and then did you rectify okay. it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think I need to sort of swat up a lot more. Well, you've had it, it's your first one, isn't it? Rome wasn't built in a day, was it? I'm really, I'm really proud of you, Holly. And I bet she has made a sale, so it's perfect. Holly is now officially a King's Fine Food sales executive and is building her own network of affluent young clients. I think the thing that I've found most shocking is how, like, so many people sort of spend so much money on food. It's just, it's, it's mind-blowing, but I guess if it's what you want, then you're willing to spend whatever and you've got the money, then there's nothing stopping you.